What I'm going to tell you about is something that has been the greatest discovery of my lifetime. And I don't say that uh, with a grain of salt. I mean, it's been absolutely unbelievable. I just submitted two papers for publication, one to the, probably one of the highest hot journals of the land, another in another journal. But this discovery of earthing and zeta potential has uh, literally uh, changed the whole way I look at illness. Um, for the past two or three years, I haven't been uh, here at the AFIR. I'm lecturing. I'm just doing the module two. Uh, I've been on sabbatical for a couple of years. Uh, my, my son became very ill, and uh, it was, uh, earthing was one of the factors that brought him back. And uh, one of the reasons why I lecture on good vibes versus bad vibes is that electropollution was really the source of his illness, uh, which really affects about 3 to 6 percent of people. Uh, it's a situation where uh, uh, you're very sensitive electrically, and what happens is your, your receptor sites on your cells, they see the wireless coming in from cordless phones, uh, baby tooth monitors, uh, cell phones, computers, Wi-Fi. And what happens to your cells is basically the receptor sites see the, wi the wireless coming in. It blocks the, uh, the, the uh, cell receptor. So it keeps out wireless, but it also keeps out hormones, vitamins, minerals. And uh, what happens is waste products increase and then microbial, uh, microbial invasion uh, increases, and then all of a sudden the cell becomes sick and the voltage goes down, and then the organism uh, gradually deteriorates. But like what I've discovered, uh, it's only been in the last two years, uh, has been so groundbreaking that uh, we wanted to give you the book complimentary. I think you, you'll really enjoy reading this book. Uh, there's a lot of science in the book, uh, and there's a lot of anecdotal cases as well. Um, I was in the same boat as Dr. Vagnini, and uh, I got cut 10 minutes too, so, so uh, I'm going to have to fly through th some of these slides. And uh, uh, I will be lecturing again at 6.30 tonight uh, where I can focus more on the energy medicine. Today I want to focus more uh, on the earthing. So if we look at vibrational medicine, and what I'd like to get you to think about, not as a human being, as protoplasm and enzymes and, and metabolics and biochemistry, which is all good, but, you, but we need to take it to a higher level. You need to think of the human being as an electrical organ. And it's no accident that I'm a cardiologist with the heart being the most electrical of all organs. I mean, I used to, uh, when I was on call at, for cardiology uh, on a cath lab, for example, and uh, it was a full moon, I used to dread it. And the reason why I dreaded it was because I would see people coming in with arrhythmia, hypertensive crisis, myocardial infarction, plaque rupture, all sorts of things. And I could never understand why. I mean, now I do. I mean, basically, geopathic stress is a factor. You know, if, if our body is 70% water, and if the full moon can move a tide 18 feet in Maine, what can that do to a vulnerable myocardium? And, and basically, you know, flying from continent to continent on a full moon, or, and, uh, you know, flying on situations where your circadian rhythms are disrupted, you know, vulnerable myocardium events can occur. But I, can never I never understood it years ago, but today it's, it's just crystal clear to me. So I want you to think of a human uh, or, the, or an animal, a mammal, you know, any living thing as uh, co we're conglomerations of electromagnetic energy. Our cells transmit and receive energy, and it's the exchange of energy from cell to cell. And we call that tensegrity. So um, if I have a practitioner working on my left elbow, it could be healing my right hip, you know, through the electro circuit or the matrix of the body. So integrative biophysics, I believe, is really going to be the future of medicine. I think the, the way we're practicing medicine right now, uh, it's OK. There's a lot to be desired. But I think it's going to come down to frequencies. And the oldest frequency and the most nurturing frequency that we have is the ground beneath our feet. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. The Mother Earth energy is the most healing energy of all. This is a rose with energy. This is the energy of our body. Uh, these are our chakras, uh, concentrated energy situations. Uh, I wrote the book Heartbreak and Heart Disease because the energy of heartbreak or the, or the terrible energy of heartbreak can literally cause heart disease. It can affect the fourth chakra. If you look at repair loops, uh, the damage, we see body trauma, emotional trauma, uh, toxins, including medications, uh, which are the fourth leading cause of death in this country today, properly prescribed, electropollution, trans fats. All this inflammation and disease is really a departure from healthy, synchronous vibration 
of our cells and our body. If we look at pathology, every situation, we can look at nutrient depletion. There's always environmental toxicity. There's electrical pollution uh, now because of the computer age and the cell phone age and, and uh, all the electronics. Uh, every illness has an emotional component. I mean, I became a psychotherapist for that reason. And then there's mitochondrial dysfunction at the core of it. Now, if we look at uh, an EBCT scan, and this is an, NX, uh, an NFL football player, you can see that um, basically the plaque in his vessels. Now, hyperviscosity syndrome uh, occurs when our blood thickens, when our blood is like red ketchup. And the problem is, is when I worked in a cath lab for years and did thousands of angiograms, and then angiograms of patients following myocardial infarction, we would do an angiogram and we see a normal coronary vessel, or we see a vessel with maybe a 40% lesion in it. And I never understood why I would see normal coronaries in patients with wall motion abnormalities. Well, back then, we, we used to think it was coronary spasm. But it's clearly hyperviscosity syndrome. It's thick blood. And the problem is, is that it's inflammation that is causing hyperviscosity. And Fred Vagnini is absolutely correct. The major cause of hyperviscosity syndrome is a high hematocrit and a high blood sugar. And basically, if you have uh, like a little polycythemia, when you're treating your men, for example, with testosterone and their RBCs tend to go up and the blood pressure goes up, be very careful because you're inducing you know, hyperviscosity syndrome in these men if you're not careful and checking the hematocrit. And I say that with caution because the more your blood thickens, the greater the cardiac events. And that's, and that's clearly demonstrable in the, in the literature as well. It's like statins. I mean, statins happen to lower cholesterol, but the cholesterol theory for heart disease is really losing momentum. I never agreed with it. I think it's the biggest scam this country has ever seen. I mean, it's, it's, uh, there is truth to the fact that oxidized LDL, a particularly small particle LDL, and especially LP little a, you know, these are the culprits in really inflammation. But if your LDL is not oxidized, I mean, who cares? I mean, you know, if it's fluffy, non oxidized, and, and it's not causing inflammation, it's not doing anything. So basically, what we have to look at is an unsung hero and a forgotten parameter in cardiovascular disease, and that's blood viscosity. And what I learned is that grounding, simply putting your feet on the ground, will improve zeta potential. And what zeta potential is, it's the force between RBCs. It's like if you're in a traffic jam and, uh, and the cars can't pass one another, that's rule formation of RBCs. But if the cars are passing one another on a highway, that's good velocity between those cars. So the greater the zeta potential, the greater the velocity between those RBCs, and the less the blood viscosity. And that's what you're really after. 